extended Creighton family, and Ben came out here uh, at the behest of uh, John uh, Ed Creighton uh, as a business partner and supplied much of the wherewithal for people heading west. He was a wholesaler and uh, everything from wagons to nails to sugar to coffee, um, Ben Gallagher supplied uh, to people headed to um, California. Um, his family went on to include this woman, Rachel Gallagher, uh, who was married to uh, Ben's son, Paul, and um, served with my father on the Omaha Charter Convention in 1956, which drew up the Constitution, basically, for the city of Omaha that we operate on today. This family, and here's a picture of Paul, uh, Rachel's husband, um, had, among other things, butternut coffee and a, a, a wide variety of other, uh, I guess you would call them groceries, uh, came out of what became this, Paxton and Gallagher, serving the Midwest <laughs> for over 90 years. This is from the 1960s. There's the um, butternut uh, company, which just recently burned down. Past Paxson and Gallagher's warehouse with a big butternut coffee can on the top of it. This is my family. Uh, after Father Kavanaugh in 1855, um, this man, his father, this is that, that man is named John Kavanaugh as well. This man's father, Michael Kavanaugh, came out to Omaha at the behest of Father Kavanaugh as one of two twins, Michael and John and uh, st established the, family, the Kavanaugh family in Omaha. This is them in the 1880s, and this gentleman here is my grandfather, uh, who became uh, subsequently a chief on the Omaha Fire Department, uh, John Kavanaugh. There's a whole series of John Kavanaugh's in my family. Um, and was nicknamed Smokey uh, for his penchant to charge into burning buildings. <laughs> This is the first Irish mayor of Omaha, uh, Mayor James Boyd, very, very prominent. Um, established a bunch of businesses, most notably the Boyd House, which was a series of opera houses in Omaha, uh, visited by, among others, Oscar Wilde. When he came to Omaha, Oscar Wilde performed in the Boyd House. Mayor Boyd, born in Ireland, um, subsequently becomes uh, governor of the state of Nebraska. Not until after the United States Supreme Court rules on a lawsuit, Mayor Boyd was a Democrat, filed by the Republican Party that said, hey, if you're not born in the United States, you can't be governor of Nebraska. Oh my God, imagine what would happen. So it matriculates all the way up to the US Supreme Court and there's a case with Boyd's name on it and the US Supreme Court says, uh, yes, you can. And it's the law to this day. He um, established some of the first packing houses in Omaha. Pork packer and curer of choice sugar cured hams. That's Boyd Packing House. The Boyd Opera House. This is the one that Oscar Wilde performed in, which was famously advertised as the first fireproof building in Omaha. It subsequently burnt down. Uh, seven of the 52 mayors of Omaha have been Irish. Um, ben Kennedy, I, 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 I put him before Boyd a little bit as the first Irish Catholic uh, mayor of Omaha. Boyd was a Protestant. Um, Dan Butler, Glenn Cunningham, Gene Leahy, Bob Cunningham, and Mike Boyle. Actually, there's another one that we all remember because recently Mike Fahey was the uh, mayor of Omaha. This man, a relative of mine, <clears throat> John Donahue, was the first Irish Catholic chief of police of Omaha, Nebraska, and he served for life. He came in in about 1898, and he died in office in about 1916, 1912, sorry. Um, he's famous for overruling the blue laws. Omaha then, as now, uh, was not looked on kindly by the rest of the state. And part of that was 
Omaha was a pretty wide open, freewheeling town. We had saloons, we had gambling casinos, we had bordellos. So the legislature kept passing laws to make it harder and harder for Omaha to continue its sinful ways. These were called blue laws. And among them were laws that said, you can't serve liquor on a Sunday. And so all of the taverns in Omaha were supposed to close on a Sunday, which was not on Chief Donahue's schedule. And so he said, that's fine. I'll start enforcing that next Sunday. And he did. He started enforcing it by closing down the bar at the Field Club of Omaha, the Omaha Country Club, the Omaha Athletic Club, and all of the premier venues in Omaha where the rich and powerful had their drinks on Sunday afternoon. The next week, the blue laws were miraculously unenforced in Omaha for the entirety of their history on the law books. He was a creative guy, and um, he did a lot for Omaha becoming kind of a, a known city for you can be safe here. As a matter of fact, it became so known for that that the criminal class from around the Midwest would vacation in Omaha because they knew that their ill-gotten gains would be safe and they wouldn't be molested by anybody. And um, he died in office in 1912 and the uh, paper, sorry, that opposed him and the political regime that he represented ran the headline, Grim Reaper comes for Chief Donahue. <laughs> in 1916, Ireland again declared its independence from Great Britain. This is a copy of the Declaration of Independence of Ireland. And we have an original in our family because my grandfather, on my mother's side, a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, kind of a similar to the IRA organization, uh, participated in what became known as the Easter Rising in 1916 in Ireland, uh, one of a long series of failed attempts by the Irish to throw off the uh, English yoke, but the beginning of a very successful uh, Irish War of Independence. So my grandfather, who's from County Mayo, and his brothers, uh, rose up, as was the plan, uh, to seize the local constabulary uh, and hold for reinforcements from Dublin. Unfortunately, the day before the Rising, orders had gone out from a splinter group that the Rising was canceled, and so no place in the country did any revolutionary activities except Dublin and this little part of West Mayo where my grandfather and his brothers successfully took over the police station and waited for reinforcements. <laughs> Subsequently, in the next week, it developed there weren't going to be any reinforcements, and everybody that was involved with this was a wanted man, at which point my grandfather went to my grandmother, they had not been married yet, and said, uh, Anne, uh, I'm afraid I have to go. Are you coming? And they left on a tramp steamer from Sligo, which is the closest big port to County Mayo, uh, for the United States in the heart and the depths of the First World War, when submarines were sinking ships right and left in the North Atlantic. That's when my family, on my mother's side, immigrated to the United States, and subsequently came to Omaha, because we had some relatives out here, and the clergy here, uh, who are represented in this picture, we'll get to in a second, uh, welcomed them with open arms. As a matter of fact, Monsignor John Hallinan, native of County Cork, as is Dr. O'Sullivan here, um, greeted them upon their arrival in Omaha and found them lodgings in South Omaha, where I grew up, on Q Street, uh, for, ironically, uh, part of St. Mary's Parish. Again, same name, different parish, as the original parish that the Kavanaugh's came to in 1855. During the War of Independence, which went on from 1916 to 1921, um, the president of the Irish Republic, Eamon de Valera, uh, represented the Irish people, this is him, in the United States, 
During the revolution, he was here for about 16 months, raising money and support for the Irish revolutionary cause. And extremely popular and supported by the Irish clergy, as you can see here, including the bishop and this man, Father Flanagan. Uh, and this is a photo that was taken at the then Boys Town, which was downtown, of Eamon de Valera, surrounded by the clergy and uh, Irish immigrant and nationalists, and the boys of Boys Town on a fundraising tour of Omaha in 1920. The next year, the Irish were successful in uh, driving the British out of most of Ireland. And Father Flanagan goes on to become uh, really legendary, uh, I believe now is up for sainthood, uh, for establishing Boys Town in Omaha, but also a network of Boys Towns uh, around the country, and died actually after uh, President Truman sent him to Europe uh, in the post-World War II era to see about setting up uh, care for orphan children in Europe. Um, this is Father Flanagan's uh, immigration uh, papers. Um, and as you'll see, that is Reverend Edward Joseph Flanagan, 29 years old, uh, came to Omaha, Nebraska, uh, and on his own started picking up orphans off the street um, to uh, help alleviate the chronic uh, problem with homeless youth. This is the Boys Town Band that became famous. I can remember the Boys Town Band as a uh, young kid. I can remember Boys Town as a place that my parents often threatened to send me uh, <laughs> as a young child. And for their really incredibly tough football program. They were, they were great. Um, this becomes world famous after the uh, 1930s movie Boys Town starring Mickey Rooney. We've kind of come full circle now, and I wanted to leave a little time at the end for the questions and answers, so I just want to give you an update on these folks. This family, uh, my great-grandfather, uh, the second generation in Omaha, uh, and this man, John Cavanaugh, um, go on to, that's John Cavanaugh as a young man, a uh, firefighter. Uh, to establish my Irish family with these two folks. That gentleman is John Cavanaugh's son, my father, Jack Cavanaugh. And this woman, uh, you can't tell here, but she had red hair. Uh, beautiful Irish Colleen, uh, Kathleen Munnelly. And they married at the beginning of the war and started what became the seven kids in my family. Um, and um, actually, it's interesting because the Blackstone Hotel, which is now the Cottonwood, uh, was uh, the fanciest hotel in town then. And a friend of theirs uh, got uh, them as a wedding gift a reception breakfast at the Blackstone Hotel. That was the top of the rock in those days. Um, this is my father who uh, served on the Douglas County Board in exactly the same office that I did. Uh, and was a, a friend and supporter of President Kennedy's. This is the day before the election in 1960 when President Kennedy was elected. Uh, he did a uh, last minute stop in Omaha, Nebraska, and this is at Epley Airfield. The young women that you see behind them are Mercy High School students, including my sister Mary Ann. And again, products of the Sisters of Mercy education that said, our society would be better if we had intelligent, educated women. Well, they, they were there to cheer John F. Kennedy, the first Irish Catholic president of the United States, on to victory on the eve of his election in 1960. This is my mother's family, uh, and that woman that you saw as the, as the bride is this young lady here standing in front of uh, the home that I grew up in, in 3902 R Street. Uh, this woman and this man are the two that came from County Mayo as a result of the Easter Rising in 1916. This man, John P. Munley, also known as Red, uh, became the legendary uh, 
publican of Duffy's Tavern, some of you might have visited along the way. Also a uh, postmaster pretty much for life of uh, Nebraska. And this man, uh, James Munley, and we are named after that, that gentleman, James Munley, uh, is um, my uncle and godfather and served for 25 years on the Public Service Commission. This immigrant family, and this man died early, he was 42, uh, came from a part of the world that had no electricity. They never saw a street light until they got to the United States. They owned no land, and they came here mm, virtually penniless. Uh, bought that house, raised that family, all of which became successful, productive citizens of the United States. And if they were here today, they would be known as undocumented immigrants. <laughs> My grandmother did not have documentation to stay in the United States. She came to visit her sister in San Francisco and stayed for the rest of her life. My grandfather did not have documentation to stay in the United States. He came, worked in the uh, labor movement here in the packing houses and stayed for the rest of his life. I have a special empathy for what we call today these aliens, undocumented immigrants, because I'm a product of that, and probably a bunch of us are. The Irish in America, and particularly the Irish in Omaha, are a great example why we should be an opening, welcoming society. The Sisters of Mercy, who came here and set up a hospital and schools and delivered many of us and educated generations of productive women, uh, were from Ireland. The Creightons who came here and established a college and a university educated generations of uh, professionals, uh, the backbone of our society, came from Ireland. Father Flanagan, who came here uh, as a young priest and established Boys Town, which went on to become world famous for its great work with orphan children, came from Ireland. And on and on and on. We should welcome immigrants, we should be cognizant of our past as sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters, great-grandsons and great-granddaughters of those same immigrants that are coming here today. And I think that we should be proud of the fact that that immigrant woman standing there could one day stand with the mother of the President of the United States and welcome her to our great city. This mural at 32nd and L Street encapsulates that history. This <laughs> mural that I was happy to help endow as a commissioner features my grandmother. Uh, this is Monsignor Hellman who baptized me. This is my uncle Red uh, who was the postmaster for many, many years. Uh, this is the uh, John Donahue, uh, the fire chief or the police chief that we talked about. This is Duffy's Tavern, and if any of you have ever been in there, if you look closely in this, you'll recognize it, because not only does it have a bunch of political signs, there's me playing a pinball machine right there. <laughs> this is the rose window at St. Mary's Church, which Monsignor Hellman specifically designed with a Celtic theme, and it's one of the most gorgeous rose windows, and on and on and on, back to uh, the potato famine in Ireland, which drove so many of us here. Uh, starving, uh, penniless, and homeless. So that's the story of the Irish in Omaha and a small part of the greater story of the Irish in America. Thanks for coming out on this cold winter day to hear it. Thank you.